A few days ago, I got a message from Jeff, who is a member of our Excel Academy. The challenge he had is that he wanted to place month names inside the group by function. The problem is that group by puts those month names in alphabetical order. But that doesn't make any sense because months have a natural order and it's not alphabetical. So how can we get those text values of month names into the right order? That's what we're finding out in this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. Here in our example file, we have a table called data with date, financial year, month name, item and value. Let's start by recreating Jeff's issue. In cell J4, our type equals, group by, open your bracket, we have our row fields. We want to group by the financial year and also the month name. Then we have the value, which is in our value column. We want to sum the values. We don't need the field headers, but we do want total depth and we want totals and subtotals. That's two. I can close that bracket and calculate and we now get our result. The financial years are in order, but the months are sorted alphabetically. And that's not an order that anybody wants. So let's find out how we can get these into the correct month order. In Jeff's example, he already had a column for financial year and month name, but he didn't have a date column. Therefore, initially, we are going to say that we can't use the date column in our calculation. Now, for our example, the financial year is the end of March. We've also got an order of our months. Now, this is just a hard-coded list into these cells. If we wanted to, we could calculate this list dynamically using this formula. But for this example, we're happy to stick with a hard-coded list. Let's now edit our group by and we're going to break up our row fields argument. Instead of having our financial year and our month together, we're going to use H stack, open your bracket. Our first item is going to be our financial year and then our second column will be our month name. I'll then close that bracket and calculate. That gives us exactly the same result. We now need to add some way of sorting our month column. Now the way that group by works is that it groups by the first column, then it groups by the second column and then the third column until we get to the values. And then it aggregates those values based on each group. That means that if we want to sort by our month name, we can add a column before our month name, which is in the correct order. That means it will then sort by our year, then the month number, and then the month name. Now to get our month number, we can use the X match function. Here in cell H4, our type equals X match, open your bracket. We can look up our month name, and then we can return the values from our order. The X match function returns the position of an item in a list. Therefore, April is first in our list. May is second in our list. So if we close that and calculate, we now get the month number based on our custom order. Let's now add that formula into our group by. I'll copy the X match, come back, and we want to add this before our month name. I'll then paste in our X match, enter a comma and commit that. Therefore, we now have our year, our month, our month name and our value. And you'll notice that our months are now in the correct order. However, we've now got this month number column that we don't need. So let's edit our formula once more. At the start, we're going to use the choose colds function. So choose colds, open your bracket. We have our array, that is the result of the group by function. And then at the end, we can list the columns that we want to return. We want to return columns one, three, and four. I'll close the bracket at the end, close the function and calculate, and now we get exactly the right result. We have financial year, 
We have our month names in order, and then we have our value. So if we have a financial year and a month name column, that's how we can solve that scenario. I just want to briefly interrupt things here to let you know about our Excel Academy. That's the place where we have all of our courses, all of our tools, all of our add-ins, our ebook library, our live masterclasses, our Q&A sessions, and much more. And they are all designed to help you master Excel and save huge amounts of time. So you can spend less time at work and more time doing what you love. Just head on over to excelofthegrid.com and check out the Excel Academy. There's a good chance that in your data, you won't have a financial year or month name column. You'll probably just have a date column. Now we don't need to add these calculations of financial year and month name to our data. Instead, we can add these directly into our group by calculation. So let's go and see how we can do that. We're going to edit our group by, and here we have our reference to the financial year column. We want to generate the same numbers, but not by referencing our financial year column. Instead, we're going to use the year function, and in there, we want to use the EO month function. EO month just gets the last day from a financial month. We can select our date column. That means that for every date, it will calculate the end of the month for that date. We then want to change that into a year. Currently, this would work if we had our year end aligned with the calendar year end, but we've said that our year end is March. Therefore, we do need to use our months argument and we want to offset by nine months. So if our month end is March, we need nine months to get to the end of the year. I can then close the EO month and close the year. Now, you may be aware of a challenge with EO month that if I calculate this, it returns the value error. What we need to do is to force EO month into an array. To do that, we force a calculation into the array that we use inside EO month. I'm going to enter plus, or we could also use minus minus or multiply by one. They all give us the same result. That now gives us our financial year, but it hasn't referenced our financial year column. Let's undertake a similar action for our month name. Instead of referencing our month name column, we're going to use the text function. We want to select our date, and then we want to return the month, which is three Ms, that will give us the short month name. We enter that as text, and when that calculates, we still get our month end name. Let's check our formula. We've still got one more reference to our month end name column, and that's inside our X match. Let's undertake the same action. We want the text function of our date column, and we want to return the short month. We'll close that bracket and calculate, and we now get our full result without even referencing our financial year or month name column. But we're not done yet there's another step we can take to simplify this formula. We're currently referencing our order cells, but the order is also available inside our date column. That means we don't need our order cells at all if we have a date column. Let's edit our group by. I'm going to remove the X match, which originally calculated the order. Instead, we're going to use the month of the EO month. That will be based on our date column. We want nine periods offset so that it gives us the correct financial month. We can then close the EO month, close the month. And before we commit this, we just need to force our EO month range to become an array. We're going to enter plus. And when we commit that, we now get exactly the same result and if we look at this result, it's not referencing our order column. So that means that in your scenario, if you only had a date column, you would still be able to achieve this exact layout. And there we go. That's how we can sort month names into the correct order inside the group by function. And actually, we can use this technique with any text values that we want to sort into any custom order. 
Now, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe and get notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.